The plasma membrane, so cell membrane is also called plasma membrane. Don't get confused when you see these two different terms. Cell membrane and the plasma membrane are the same things. They mean the same thing. Plasma membrane is the boundary that separates the living cell from its surrounding. Uh, the cells or all organisms must live in an environment, but environment is not alive. Only the organism or the cell is alive and we have to, the cell must separate itself. So you cannot uh, distribute the life to everywhere equally. So you must make a border. You have to uh, show the border lines first. So inside this border, that's life. Outside of the life, we cannot, uh, outside of the border, we cannot do anything. Because uh, first of all, you need energy and you have to collect energy. You have to concentrate energy in a place. So first of all, you have to determine the place and uh, what determines that place of life is cell membrane. Plasma membrane exhibits a selective permeability. Selective permeability means to allow some substances, some molecules to cross it more easily than the others. That means there are some molecules which can pass through the membrane uh, or which can go in past the membrane and go inside the cell easily and some others uh, need some more help to get inside and some of the chemicals, some of the molecules mustn't pass the membrane. Transport proteins are often responsible for controlling passage across the cell membrane. That means there are a group of proteins which are found on the cell membrane. This is the structure of cell membrane, molecular structure of cell membrane. When you look at it, that, look at that first, it may be a bit confusing. So to understand it, first of all, we have to remember what there is outside the cell, what there is inside the cell. Outside of the cell is the environment, inside the, uh, outside, uh, outside of the cell membrane is the environment and inside of the cell membrane is the cytoplasm. Those are both aqueous environments. So those are both environments which has a lot of water. So this is a space filling model of cell membrane. These red and gray balls are water molecules. So red, this large red ball symbolizes oxygen and these two white or gray balls symbolize hydrogen. Okay, so these are water. Outside the cell is water. In, uh, inside the cell, which is cytoplasm, it is uh, an aqueous environment as well. So there are a lot of water molecules inside the uh, cytoplasm as well. But the cell membrane separates these two aqueous, aqueous environments from each other. There is only a few water molecules in the cell membrane, as you can see here. Then what are these things? So these are yellow and green molecules are phospholipids. Phospholipids are composed of a phosphate group, which is bound to a glycerol and uh, two fatty acid molecules are connected to that glycerol as well. So uh, every phospholipid molecule has a hydrophilic, hydrophilic tail, hydrophilic head and two hydrophobic tails. Hydrophi hydrophilic ends face to the aqueous environments, which means outside the cell and to the cytoplasm. And the hydrophobic tails, fatty acids, face to each other. And this makes the inside cell membrane. So the cell membrane is a bilayer, 
a bilayer of phos uh, phospholipids. But there are some other groups, some other, there are other molecules, another important group of molecules in the cell membrane proteins. These blue structures, which you see as helixes, are proteins. So proteins are embedded into cell membrane. And these proteins have uh, hydrophil hydrophilic positions and that allow the water molecules to pass through the cell membrane. Okay, now we are going to look at these structures in more detail. This is our picture. So when we say cell membrane, you have to remember this picture. So this is the cell membrane. This is inside, this is outside. And the cell membrane separates inside the cell from the outer environment. Uh, there's a video here. Let's take the protein called aquaporin helps the water to get inside the cell because the cell needs the water too. So this is the, this white structure here is the aquaporin protein. Uh, to understand the cell membrane, to understand structure of cell membrane, first of all, we have to understand what a phospholipid is because phospholipids as, as are the phospholipids are the main components of the cell membranes so uh, phospholipids are large molecules composed of glycerol and fatty acids and phosphate group so this is a glycerol okay this is a glycerol you have to memorize this okay learn this structure you have to memorize this structure and you have to be able to draw this picture and how do we make glycerol i'm going to teach you it now şimdi size doğrudan doğruya göstereceğim glycerol nasıl yapılır glycerol yani ezberlemek değil öğrenmek gerekiyor evet first of all in the glycerol structure in the glycerol structure there are three carbon atoms okay there are three carbon atoms covalent bound covalent, covalently bound to each other okay so this is one carbon this is second carbon and this is third carbon we have three carbons and they are covalently bound to each other with single covalent bonds okay so they have free bounds right so one oh group is connected to each carbon atom birer tane oh grubu bağladık üç tane karbonumuz var her birine birer tane oh grubu bağladık şimdi her birine birer tane oh grubu bağladıktan sonra geri kalan açık e, yerleri de geri kalan açık e, bağları da hidrojenle dolduruyoruz. Is it difficult to learn the open formula? All you have to do is to understand what binds to which uh, group or which atom binds to which atom. It's so easy. Just three carbon atoms. All of them have a hydroxyl group and rest of the bonds are filled rest of the bonds are filled with hydrogen so this is our glycerol there is another important molecule fatty acids do you remember the general formula of organic acids so this is glycerol in this glycerol uh, we esterify or we bind two fatty acids to two of these OH groups. So one fatty acid here, another fatty acid here, and to the third one, to the third OH group, we add, we bind a phosphate group. This bond formation, hydroxyls lose their hydrogens and a covalent bond is formed between the fatty acids and oxygen. 
These are fatty acids. These are examples for fatty acids. So there is another uh, molecule you have to memorize. So don't worry about this part. This is R group, but the important part is this part, COOH. Uh, let me do something. I'm gonna highlight it for you. So this part. So this is COOH. What's COOH? That's organic acid group, COOH. That's organic acid. Again, this is organic acids. Roots, these are roots, chemical roots. Then uh, how many fatty acids are there in this picture? So these are fatty acids. Then we have to connect these fatty acids to We have to connect these fatty acids to our glycerol. And this is another way to show uh, fatty acids. And this is called space filling model, okay? So these are, these are open formula. This is the open formula of this fatty acid, and this is the other. But there is something you have to remember with the fatty acids. Fatty acids can be saturated or unsaturated, okay? Saturated or unsaturated. Uh, that is something to do with the carbons in the chain, okay? In the R group. If there are only single covalent bonds between the carbons of the uh, side chain that means that fatty acid is saturated but if there are double or triple bonds between the carbons or if there is any carbons any two are ca any carbon pairs which are connected to each other double with double or triple bonds that fatty acid is unsaturated we are gonna see what happens uh Yuck. So this means this, okay? Space filling model. So what happens if there are double bonds between two carbon atoms? These double bonds cause a shape change, a conformational change or break in the chain, okay? And that decreases the melting temperature of lipids. All right, now let's see how do the fatty acids react with glycerol. So there are three fatty acids here, as you can see. How do I know that's fatty acid? There's a carbonic acid group. There's, there's a carboxyl group. Okay, carboxyl means COOH, which means carbonic acid uh, or organic acid group. So this is an organic acid group and there's a long chain long hydrocarbon chain which is connected to that so this is a fatty acids now we are gonna bind these fatty acids to this glycerol from where which group of this glycerol do we use to connect these fatty acids so at the end we will have again three carbons oxygen and uh, fatty acids except for its OH group. Okay? So now we have three fatty acids connected to uh, a glycerol. But there are three water molecules. There are three more water molecules. Don't get confused about that. Okay. Then what is phospholipid? In the previous picture, so this is a triglyceride, okay? Triglyceride. If there are three fatty acids connected to a glycerol molecule, that's a triglyceride. But instead of that, we add one phosphate group to one of the carbons of glycerol, 
And again, if we connect two fatty acids, that molecule is a phospholipid. Okay? Difference between triglyceride. In triglyceride, let's look at the uh, picture. In triglyceride, there is one glycerol molecule and three fatty acids connected to that. But in uh, phospholipid, there are two fatty acids connected to uh, two of the carbons. But to the third carbon, instead of a fatty acid, a phosphate group is connected. Okay, so this is the phosphate group. And some other chemical molecules like this can be bound on this phospholipid through the phosphate group. But the important thing here is the phosphate group. So don't worry about this part. Okay, this is another way to show uh, a phospholipid, which is a very nice picture. You can see this picture in your books as well. So this is the glycerol. As you can see here, this is the glycerol. These are two fatty acids. These are two fatty acids. And this is the phosphate group, which is bound to the third carbon of glycerol. And on this uh, phosphate group, there is another uh, chemical group attached, uh, which is called choline. So there are different side groups could be bound on this phosphate. So the, again, this is the space filling model, space filling model of a phospholipid. What can phospholipids do? So in the phospholipid structure, what you have to see is fatty acids have hydrocarbon chains, long hydrocarbon chains, and these hydrocarbon chains are hydrophobic. But phosphate group is a polar group, so it's hydrophilic. That makes the uh, that makes the phosphoglycerate a amphipathic molecule. So one side is hydrophobic, the other side is hydrophilic. This is the most important thing about the uh, phospholipid. Uh, burda, uh, what can phospholipids do? Phospholipids can form micelles, liposomes, or bilayer sheets. Okay? So these are micelliums, these are liposomes, and these are bilayers, phospholipid bilayers. Phospholipid bilayer structure is important for us. Sabunun 